Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to show you my updated version of my Cyber Dragon um, uh, deck which uh, basically th thanks to the new structure deck being released, uh, Cyber Strike, uh, it is a lot more budget friendly now to build this. A lot of really good cards have now been reprinted in common which means uh, you know this deck is, is much cheaper now to build for anybody that wants to play this deck and um, yeah and you can pretty much build 90% percent of this deck you know using the cards within these within the cyber strike structure deck so the way i look at this this is very budget friendly easily accessible to anybody who's got a 30 pound or 30 pound slash 30 dollar you know uh, price budget and they want to build a cyber dragon uh, structure deck um this is this is one that you know i maybe you might want to consider giving a go um i do want to make a full disclosure here though some of the cards in here aren't actually included in the Cyber Strike structure deck, but they are very easily accessible on places like eBay and also with other independent retailers at you know very very low prices. So you know you can build this deck for less than thirty quid if you if you choose to do so. So you know it is very budget friendly. But anyway, that's enough for me talking about about how budget friendly this deck is. And uh, let's just go right onto the main deck. So um so obviously as this is going to be a Cyber Dragon uh, deck. I do play three copies of the original OG Cyber Dragon. Um, you basically need him in this deck. He's pretty much a free special summon if you're going second. Um, and you know, pr pretty much every card in the extra deck uh, does require Cyber Dragon. And the fact that you know he's known as a Cyber Dragon without his card effect, you know, because with the other Cyber Dragon cards, they're usually called Cyber Dragon when they're on the field or in the graveyard. You know, it means it's so much better because obviously if your opponent tries to, you know, negate your monster effects somehow, then, you know, those cards won't be called Cyber Dragon, but he will always be called Cyber Dragon. So you can, so, you know, he can be used with a lot of the fusion plays very easily. And uh, next I play three copies of Cyber Dragon Dry. Very important card to have in this deck. This card, uh, the main effect of this card that I actually use is when he's normal or special summoned, uh, uh, sorry, when he's normal summoned, you can make all Cyber Dragon um, Dragons you control become level 5, you know, and this is a very important um, effect to have because the way this card works is, end of the day, you know, you got to look at if you want to go into Xyz plays to go into like Cyber Dragon Infinity, you need you need to have rank for, you need to have you know uh, level fives to basically you know Xyz into Nova and then to you know rank up into into in Cyber Dragon Infinity. So that's why this card's really important because without without this card, you know the only way you're really going to go into Cyber Dragon Infinity is uh, basically having you know two cyber dragons out like this and then exceeding into nova like that which you know uh well, the fact that because you're limited to only three copies of cyber dragon in your deck it, you know you kind of need dry, dry to be able to turn all your other cyber dragons into level five to help you with those exceeds exes plays and then uh, yeah and then um along with dry i play three copies of cyber dragon veer and cyber dragon veer is basically a free special summon in my opinion very easy to uh, to go into uh, to uh, to summon Cyber Dragon via on the field because all that's going to happen is basically when you normal or special summon a Cyber Dragon, you know, uh, during uh, during your turn, then what will happen is you know you can special summon via from your hand. So if you look at it like this, you know, imagine you normal summon Dry and you got Veer in your hand, special summon via. Dry turns both of them into level 5, you can then go into your Xyz plays. And also because they're now both going to be called Cyber Dragons due to their effects, you know, you can go into Fusion plays as well. So that's why, you know, Veer is a good card to play at 3. Next, um, you know, you need 3 copies of uh, Cyber Dragon Core in this deck. Let you search out a cyber spell or trap up upon someone, you know, which is really important because at the end of the day, you know, if you want to be able to search out, you know, spell cards, things like cyber repair plant is important in this deck because that helps you, you know, uh, you know, to to go into your extra deck plays and you know helps you also recycle and also search out cards from your deck. So that's why you know core is very important. It, you know, you have to play this card at three copies. I mean, you could try experimenting it at two. I have done that in the past. Haven't seen much detriment but to be honest with you I'm more comfortable playing it at three copies which is why you know it's in here at three so yeah so that's three copies of core and now 
thanks to the release of the Cyber Strike Structure deck, we do now play three copies of Cyber Dragon Natched in this deck. This used to be a quite an expensive card to get. I mean, I remember this card used to retail for about five pounds each in the UK and uh, did go up to something like around 10 pounds. Now, obviously for the ultra rare versions of this, it is still very pricey. However, now thanks to the fact that this is a common card, I have seen this online for going for a little, as little as 15 pence. Sorry, not 15 pence, I think it was uh, 19 pence I've seen it going for online. So yeah, so you know, very cheap and very easy pick up and pretty much and pretty much helps with the consistency of the deck because this special summons, you know, n not only does it special summon a side dragon from a, a one machine monster from your graveyard with 2100 attack or defense, but it's a free special summon onto the field. And the way I use this card is I combo it off with an another really good reprint, which is Cyber Dragon Hurts. So this card here, you know, I did play on online. I did test it out with uh, two copies in my deck to obviously keep the card count down. But end of the day, what ended up happening, I decided to bump it up to three copies because it was because it was just so good. Because the way this works is the way I do it is if I have Natchta in my hand, Wizard Hurts, I basically activate Natchta's uh, ability by sending Hurts from my hand to the graveyard, special summon Natchta, and then that triggers Hurts' ability, which obviously lets me you know add a Cyber Dragon from my deck to my hand, which which is something that I do want so yeah so end of the day that to me is is a really good effect to have and you know and I'm really glad that you know they reprinted this looks really nice and super rare as well you know so 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 yeah so I'm happy with this now next um only because it's a new card and it also helps you know with the with the fusion plays I do play two copies of Cyber Pharos in this deck. Now, if you wanted to, you can take Cyber Pharos out of this deck and it won't really affect um, the deck too much because pretty much basically, you know, you have enough fusion spells in this in this deck to be able to fusion summon. But obviously having this card in the deck does also help. I mean, I'll just read the effect for you guys here. So what it says is you can special summon this card from your hand by tributing one machine monster once per turn during your main phase, you can fusion summon one machine fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand and or field as material. When when a fusion monster you control is destroyed by battle, you can banish this card from your graveyard, add one power bond from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of cyber uh, of cyber pharos once per turn. So um, so basically to, to sum that up really quickly, it basically acts, in my opinion, it acts like another, it's like, it acts like polymerization and, and when it goes into a graveyard, it lets you search out power bond. Now that to me is a good effect to have. Reason why I say that is because here's the thing. I don't want to play free copies of Power Bond in my deck because obviously Power Bond's detriment is the fact that at the end of the turn you're going to take damage so, uh, to equal to your the fusion monster's attack. So that uh, to me, you know, is is something I really don't want to do, especially you know if I have a feeling that my opponent can negate my attack that turn. So which is why you know I like to have other fusion spells in the deck instead of. Uh, to instead of going just relying on power bond but so which uh, having this at two copies letting me search out power bond is a great way to keep the, the number of power bonds in the deck down but also being able to able uh, to draw into it uh a much easier so yeah so that's why cyber ferris is at two copies and now onto the spells to help with draw power in this deck um i do play three copies of pot of desires um very very good reprint um right now because as you can you can get it as a common as well as you can get it as a rare and uh, as you can see here i basically got one per one common copy and i've got two rare copies here you know and yeah this card can be picked up very easily now obviously because it's with cyber dragons you want to be able to go into your extra deck so you don't want to be banishing your extra deck because imagine you banish like all, all the really good fusion monsters in the extra deck you're kind of now you know you're kind of in a difficult situation now because to, to be fair what's the point of having cyber dragons in your main deck and having all the fusion spells in your main deck uh, and not having anything to go into uh, which is why i don't play things like extravagance or pot of prosperity in this deck um, i think desire is much better because as you saw um, pretty much all the main cyber dragon cards in this deck are being played as free ofs so therefore if you activate it desires it's the chances that you're going to banish every cyber dragon card in this deck is 
is virtually non-existent so that's why desires can be played in this deck obviously i don't recommend activating more than one desires per match but you know sometimes uh you know i have seen people do two desires uh and uh you know it doesn't go well when you do that but yeah so three copies of desires and then another really good reprint here is cyber emergency really good searcher to research out cyber dragon from your deck um and basically you know thanks to this card if you wanted to you could uh, you could literally just play one copy of cyber dragon in this deck because um the original cyber dragon i don't actually need it as much in this deck as i thought i would so you know if i wanted to reduce the card count i could actually reduce that down to one copy and just have three copies of cyber emergency however i'm not obviously i'm obviously not going to do that because obviously i want to be able to you know to improve my consistency in terms of you know my my ability to summon from the extra deck so which is why you know i play three copies of cyber emergency in this deck and then um i play three copies of cyber repair plant now, really good searcher. Uh, searcher. Uh, only downside to this card is, you know, you kind of need uh, a cyber dragon, in, at least one cyber dragon in your graveyard to be able to use it. So that's basically the downside of this card. However, you know, once you do have a cyber dragon in your graveyard, this effect is amazing because you basically get to either add a, uh, add a light machine from your deck to your hand or you can target one like machine in your graveyard and shuffle it back into your deck and you know if you got three copies of cyber dragon in your graveyard you can use both the effects and you know th that basically helps you know you being able to recycle cards back into your deck as well as being able to search out you know you know cyber dragons from your deck to your hand that you will need so you know so that's why it is a really good card to have in the deck so that and yeah i, I gotta play three copies of it because it helps with the consistency and then next onto the two ofs I do play two copies of Overload Fusion, uh, another really good reprint. Uh, funnily enough, before the Cyber Strike Structure Deck got released, I, I was looking online to actually see how much this was retailing for, and surprisingly, common copies of Overload Fusion were even going for like four quid each. So to be able to see this as a good as a reprint in the Structure Deck, you know, is is a, is is welcomed by myself. And basically, it's really good because end of the day. This lets you fusion summon, you know, obviously it restricts you to a dark fusion monster, but at the end of the day, it still lets you fusion summon by banishing the materials from your field and your graveyard. And that to me it, it is worth it because if you think about it this way, imagine your opponent destroyed uh, like Raigeki you or whatever, and they got rid of everything off of your main field, and now they're all in the graveyard. Um, you know, one of the things that Overload Fusion lets you do is still being able to use those monsters to be able to fusion summon, which is really good. Now, uh, to go along with Overload Fusion, I've decided to also play two copies of Cyberload Fusion, which, in my opinion, is a very, very good uh, uh, fusion spell here. Uh, this this is also ha this has also been reprinted as a as a common in the structure deck. So you know, if you picked up three copies of the structure deck, you can you'll you'll get two you'll get three copies of this. Um, but reality is, in this deck build, you only actually need two copies of this. And thanks to the fact this is actually a quick play spell. You know, you can activate it during the battle phase. And I like this card a lot for one reason. Where the where overload fusion banishes, you know, your cyber dragons, uh, you know, uh, from the game, it, the cyberload fusion then allows you to recycle all of those banished cyber dragons back into your deck. So you know, if you are in a really long game, and end of the day you're looking at your deck and your de and your deck count starting to go down because you've activated one, maybe two desires, and you need to, and you you you're worried about decking out. Overload Fusion is a great way to make sure that, you know, you can recycle back those Cyber Dragons into your main deck, you know, to keep you in the game for a lot longer. Only downside to this card is the the, the, the Fusion Monster you, you summon using this is the only one that can attack. So make sure that um, in, you only really use this in the battle phase after you've done all your other attacks. That's how I, that's how I would use o o Cyberload Fusion. And then to help OTK your opponent, I play two copies of Limiter Removal. And basically, this is a really good card to have in this deck. Um, the main reason, as, a, as a, I'll read the effect, it says, double the attack of all machine monsters you control um, uh, at both the activation uh, uh, and resolution of this card uh, until the end of this turn. During the end phase, destroy those monsters. So 
basically the way this works is imagine you bring out cyber drag uh, you bring out a bunch of cyber dragons so let's say you bring out cyber twin um and you just bought him out with uh, let's say you, you bought him out with like cyber load fusion uh if i remember yeah you can bring him out with cyber load fusion so if you if you bring him out with cyber load fusion he's got 2800 attack but you know your opponent's got too many life points and you want to like you know bring him down a bit you can turn that 28 to 56 now here's the other thing if you uh, you know you you are not restricted to just activating one of these per turn so you can go 56 and then you could go again and then go into uh that will work out to be 1120 so you could have a cyber dragon with 11200 attack on the on the field you know if you if you decide to use both copies of your limiter remover in your hand and the other thing is if you have power bond which will double cyber twins attack anyway you know you're going to go from 56 to 10 uh, to 1120 uh, to then 2240 is that correct? Yeah. So to 22, so 22,400 attack. You know, you can easily go to that level if you really wanted to with this. Um, so yeah, so you know, you can get some pretty strong boss monsters on the board and it just helps with the OTK plays in my opinion. So yeah, so that's why, you know, I play two copies of limiter removal in this deck. And then next, to help with back row removal, you know, you play two copies of twin twisters in this deck. Um, very very good card to have in this deck i mean obviously if you aren't worried about your opponent's back row uh, or you know they don't play any back row you can take this out but i i put it in there personally because obviously if, if my opponent's playing something like mystic mine i want to have a way to remove it obviously if you wanted to you can replace these with cosmic cyclone it might be a better option to go for uh, depending on on how you feel i personally prefer twin twisters because i value my life points so obviously with cosmic cyclone you got to pay like a thousand to activate here so you know i the way i look at it is if i'm running low on life points cosmic cyclone is no good to me whereas twin twisters is a bit better in my opinion so that's why you know i play twin twisters instead Next, as I mentioned, you know, you can search this card out. So I only play one copy of Power Bond in this deck. Now, if you wanted to, you could take out the two Cyber Pharaohs from this deck and, and replace them with another two copies of Power Bond if you wanted to. I personally um, don't feel like that's necessary. So therefore, you know, I play one copy of it in this deck. And to me, it's perfectly fine. A really good card to use. Um, you know to help you with your otk plays the only downside to this card is obviously you know it does cause you to take damage at during the end phase so you got to make sure you know if you are going to use this card you got to make sure that you're going to have enough life points to pay at the end in case you know you don't win the duel on that one turn so that's why and uh yeah one copy is absolutely fine in my opinion i mean you know guys let, you know, let me know what you think let me know in the comment section if you think you know i should up the copies of power bond in this deck or if i shouldn't you know so uh so yeah so um yeah so one copy of power bond next i play one copy of foolish burial basically helps you set up your graveyard uh obviously you know if you look at it like this you could send hurts to the graveyard using foolish burial to add cyber dragon from your deck to your hand um you know i can't i cannot see any reason why i wouldn't play foolish burial but yeah so that's why i play there and then you know one copy of fusion deployment and then onto the traps, I do play two copies of Cyber Network. And basically the main reason Cyber Network is here is, because obviously you gotta remember if you activate something like Overload Fusion and you banish all your Cyber Dragons, you don't have a copy of Cyber Load Fusion in your hand, you can do one way to bring those Cyber Dragons back onto the field so you can go into further Fusion plays or start to do some Xyz plays. So that's where Cyber Network comes into play because it helps you with that. And the thing is with Cyber Network, it doesn't need to be on the field for three turns. You know, you can literally activate it and then you can twin twist to this to activate its effect to then bring back your Cyber Dragons. So, you know, it, 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 is, it is a formidable card. I mean, obviously, if you don't want to play this, you don't have to play this. Now, obviously, I'm sure everybody's going to be wondering now is how come I don't have infinite impermanence in this deck? Well, as I mentioned, the way I'm looking at this deck is this is meant to be a competitive budget deck that anyone can play. You know, it's meant to be fun for anyone to pick up, even if they weren't looking to pick up free copies of the Cyber Strike Structure deck. Thanks to the this deck being printed, 
there will be retailers online who will be selling uh, all of these cards as singles online so therefore you know someone who is on a really tight budget can still buy these cards you know provided they have at least like you know roughly 30 quid uh, available to them they can build this deck so that's why i haven't got infinite impermanence in here obviously if i was to put infinite infinite impermanence in this then yeah i would remove you know i'd remove two cop the two copies of cyber network as well as uh, the you know the foolish burial and then i'd replace them or with uh with free copies of infinite impermanence but you know i want to give that option to people so yeah so if you wanted to do that by all means you're more than welcome to do it but i you know i wanted to show people how i would play it if infinite impermanence was not reprinted inside of this structure deck so yeah so that's it for the main deck now onto the side deck um, you basically play one copy of Cyber Dragon Seeger and uh, uh, obviously uh, in front of here I mean I've got a prismatic copy of this but I do know that this card was released as a common so you know it's so again very cheap and very easy to pick up and end of the day you know you can get this card for, for peanuts online and it helps you know with your OTK plays easily easy to link someone because all you basically need is two machine monsters including cyber dragon and then what will happen is it'll give your cyber dragon a 2100 attack boost uh during battle phase so you know so that's really good um, in my opinion to have obviously you know the link arrows are, are kind of rubbish so you're not really going to use the link arrows uh you don't really need to with this deck because uh, this is the only link monster you play but yeah um i do play one copy of this in the deck and then um I play two copies of Cyber Dragon Infinity. So, you know, I was thinking about playing a third copy in this deck, but I think two copies is more than fine. I mean, I've never been in a situation where I've been able to get more than one copy of this card on the field. So, so you know, end of the day, having this at two copies uh, is fine by me because, like I said, realistically, you're not going to go into two copies as it is. So what's the point of playing three copies? At the end of the day, because I'm not playing anything like Pot of Extravagance in this deck or Pot of the Pot Prosperity, you know, it's not as if, like, you know, th this card is going to get banished. So I'm happy for it to be at two copies. And then um, I play three copies of Cyber Dragon Nova. And the main reason I'm playing three copies of Cyber Dragon Nova in this deck is the way I look at it is end of the day it's got 2100 attack and it can be brought back from the graveyard you know using uh cards like cyber dragon natchter so you know once you've you know exceeded into uh, infinity if you detach nova and then you know you did summon now uh you know natchter on fr from your from your hand you can then basically bring back nova from the graveyard on your side to the field and then you know go uh, and then uh, use it to go into another copy of infinity now reality is if you wanted to you didn't have to play this at three copies you could just play it at two copies or even one copy and you could put more uh put more monsters in the deck if you want to i personally chose to play at three copies so yeah and next next i play one copy of arc rebellion exes dragon now you can go into this uh into this card because as you can see it says it requires three level five monsters now uh one of the things you do need to keep in mind the way you go you would go into this card is uh by having all three cyber dragons on your side of the field so that's how you're going to go into it now um I did originally, and now before I did think you could go into this with Cyber Dragon Dry, but uh, but you actually can't because if you read the text, it says when this card is normal summoned, you can make all Cyber Dragons you currently control become level five. You cannot special summon any monsters during the turn you activate this effect, except machine type monsters. If this card is banished, you can target one Cyber Dragon you control. It cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. So. On here, basically, the the key thing that you want to you want to look at here is you cannot special summon except machine type monsters. So that's why um, you can't. I mean, you could use Dry's effect to go into Arc Rebellion, but that would mean waiting until your next turn. And to be honest with you, uh, um, you know you, that's not really uh, an optimal strategy to use. So the way you, I would go into Arc Rebellion. Is basically if it is on the turns where I know I'm going to have three of the original Cyber Dragons on the field, that's when I would exceed into Arc Rebellion. Now, um, it is entirely up to you. You can take this card out of the deck and replace it with something else if you want. Obviously, if you've got something like a Borrow Sword, you might want to pick that instead of this uh, to have in your deck. Um, I personally put it in here because you know, I thought you know. Uh, that one game where I do get all three, it will be, it will look really good to be able to go into Arc Rebellion. So, so I thought, why not? Why not put it inside here? Uh, 
uh, yeah. And then uh, next onto the fusion uh, uh, onto the fusion monsters, I play two copies of Chi uh, Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, and uh, yeah, very good card to you to go into. Very very easy to summon this guy out. And uh, yeah, the way I would do it is um, if I was if you go into this card uh, using Overload Fusion, uh, you sorry with Cyberload Fusion, um, it's probably the best strategy to use. Because what I would personally do is um, use use uh, Overload Fusion to go into Chimera Tech Over Dragon, and then use Over Dragon to clear the monsters of your opponent's board, and then I would uh, activate Cyberload Fusion to go into Rampage. That's basically how I would uh, use Rampage in this deck, and obviously at Rampage it helps you destroy your opponent's back row, which is really good as well. So yeah, so two copies of Rampage, and then. Uh, to help with your OTK, OTK plays, I play two copies of Cyber Twin Dragon. Really, really good card. I mean, basically, you're going to get two attacks. So in my opinion, it's basically like a Borrow Sword Dragon where it gets two attacks during, uh, during the battle phase. So end of the day, you know, if you look at it this way, if you board this card out with Power Bond, it's going to have 56. And as long as your opponent's got a clear board, you should be able to OTK with this card. And uh, yeah, so that's why I play this at two copies. And then... Um, Onto the one ofs, uh, as you saw earlier, one copy of Chimera Tech Over Dragon is a good card to have in this deck. Only downside to this card is basically once it's summoned, you got to send every other card you control to the grave. So that obviously can be bad, but at the same time, it might be you know it might actually benefit you because if all those cards are in the grave, you know then you you might be able to you know. Um, the, to uh, basically, because let's say you had like a cyber network on the field and that got sent to the grave due to his effect, then you know it's going to trigger the cyber network and then you can start bringing back like banished cyber dragons. So, you know, it's uh, it's so in that way it might well really work. So, yeah, so one copy of Chimera, uh, uh, Chimera Tech Over Dragon and then uh, one copy of Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon. And uh, the main reason I have this in this deck, it basically helps you, you know, uh, uh, it acts sort of like a kaiju for cyber dragons in the sense that you know you're going to be able to fusion someone from from uh, by using a monster in the extra monster zone. So you know if your opponent was to U link you, you know then uh, you know you can get rid of two of their monsters using this. But um, if they if they basically had anything in the extra monster zone that you're like, how the hell am I going to get rid of that? So as I mentioned earlier, things like Boral Sword Dragon. Can't be destroyed by battle. This card can help you get rid of Borrows or Dragon because all you're gonna do is fusion it away. Uh, the Agnista Arrival, that card, uh, you know, end of the day, that can't be destroyed by card effects. It's unaffected by card effects. And nine times out of ten, when I've seen it out, it's always had a minimum of four thousand attack. Chimera Tech Overfleet Dragon, and so Mega Fleet Dragon helps you get rid of it because all you're gonna do is fusion it away. So that's why you know, in my opinion, it's a really good card to have. Only really have one copy of it in this deck because I think you know you don't need more than that. Um, because once you've disrupted your opponent's uh, a field, you know it's kind of difficult for them to recover from that. So therefore, you know I don't think you need more than one. And then um, or, or again, uh, to I also play one copy of Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. And basically, the way this card um, this card works is you're gonna look at it as you know you're gonna fusion. Cyber Dragon plus one machine monster. Now, it's uh, it's it is easy to go out. Now, here's the thing: is if your opponent is playing a machine monster on their side of the field, there's no restriction to how many machines you can use for Fortress Dragon's fusion summon. So let's say they had a full board of machines. So let's say you were playing a mirror match. Uh, Fortress Dragon can be really good in that sense because then you can fusion someone off everything on your opponent's side of the field, you know, which is really good. So yeah, that's why you know it's played that one copy. And uh, oh, also these two, they don't need polymerization to be summoned out. So you know that's another good thing about these two. And then um, last but not least, my most favorite Cyber Dragon card, Cyber End Dragon. You know, it's a good staple card to have in the deck, and you know, because it got reprinted, it's very budget friendly, easy to get hold of. So why not include it? So yeah, so so yeah, guys, this that's the end of this deck profile. Um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think. If you like the if you like the deck, then please do like and subscribe to my channel, and uh, let me know in the comments section uh, if you want to see uh, any playthroughs of how this deck would work. But yeah, but anyway, guys, that's the end of this video, and uh, hopefully, I'll get some new content created for you guys shortly.